Hello, it's Toaster Party, and today I'm going to be talking about what my picks are for the five best Warhammer 40k cards for CDH. So I recently got the full set spoilers for the Universes Beyond Warhammer 40k Commander decks, and there are some interesting CDH cards among them. Not a ton, but a few. But without further ado, let's get into my picks. Let's start off with number five, Belsarius Call. So this is an Azorius Isorev commander that also works as an advantage engine, as most Isorev commanders do. What its abilities are, are you can tap it into untapped artifacts you control to create a 2-2 white Astaris creature token with Vigilance. You can also tap it to tap X untapped creatures you control. Look at the top X cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact from among them, put it into your hand, and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This would be a super interesting commander, if not for the fact that it probably just isn't as good as Wrath Weatherlight Stalwart, which came out in the previous set. What does make this card interesting in comparison to Wrath, though, is the ability to dig a bit deeper to look for the Isochron Scepter in the first place to perform the combo. But between the two, I would probably just play Wrath. Interesting commander, still. Let's move on now to number four, Marinius Kalgar. So this is an Esper Iso Rev commander, and it's also an advantage engine that gets better with a lot of different token generators. Because this creature has the ability, whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. You can also pay 6 generic mana, this is the ISO rev part, where you can then create 2 2 2 white Astaris warrior creature tokens with vigilance. So if you have Smothering Tithe or Monologue Tax, you'll be drawing a bunch of additional cards every single turn. The only problem is that it requires a lot of mana to get this down on the field in the first place. But if you are able to do so and get those or those token generators online, then you'll probably be able to run away with the game at that point. Now let's move on to number three, the Golden Throne. So this is a four drop legendary artifact that has the ability, if you would lose the game, instead exile the Golden Throne and your life total becomes one. You can also tap it to sacrifice a creature to add three mana in any combination of colors. So what this probably isn't going to be used as, as a way to prevent your opponents from winning the game. What you can do with this card is to help perform a game-winning combo to help you win the game. Because this is another pseudo-Phyrexian unlife effect that would allow you to draw through your entire deck with Ad Nauseam. Because the way Ad Nauseam works is that you can keep attempting to re resolve the reveal cards from the top of your deck even once your life total drops below zero. And you don't lose the game until after the spell resolves. So, you do get through your entire deck before you lose, this card then triggers, then your life total instead goes to 1 instead of negative 50 or something. Also, this card helps set up for casting said Ad Nauseam in the first place, as you can tap it to sacrifice the creature to add the mana to then cast it. You can also cast this on the same turn as you cast the Ad Nauseam, because that ability to add 3 mana means that you'd just be paying 6 mana for your Ad Nauseam turn instead of just 5. But you get your entire deck. So it's very interesting for that niche of decks that really wants to play around with Phyrexian Unlife. Let's move on now to number 2, Chaos Mutation. So this is an instant speed polymorph effect for 5 mana, where its ability is to exile any number of target creatures controlled by different players, and for each creature exiled this way, its controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card, puts that card onto the battlefield, and the rest on the bottom of the library in random order. So the place that this really can see a lot of play is that A, instant CP polymorph effects for all those polymorph decks, and that it can also be used on the turn before you would attempt your combo win to remove any type of annoying creature stacks, because it also hits your opponent's stuff. And it just exiles it, it doesn't shuffle it back in. So if you're about to attempt to go off with something like a poly kraken, poly tyrant combo, and there's multiple different uh, rule of law creatures on the field, like Aether Swarm Cannonist or like Thalia, stuff that would get in the way of you being able to combo off, you can remove all of those and then proceed to go off into your combo because they're probably not going to flip into anything that'll stop you at that point. So a very interesting card for those polymorph decks. Now let's move on to number one, Poxwalkers, Immotech, and Biotransference. I couldn't pick just one of these cards because, for all intents and purposes, I don't really understand how all of them are going to end up working. But the fact is, 
on every single one of these cards, there is just text on it that makes me think that there is some combo out there that is just going to break one of these different cards. If I had to bet, I would bet on Poxwalkers, because it's the one that seems the most inherently broken with its ability. So what these different cards say is with Poxwalkers, for two generic and one black, you get whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, return Poxwalkers from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. What I can easily see with this card is that there's probably some line with like Gravecrawler and Ferret, Exian, Alter to make infinite mana. So there's at least one combo that I do understand among these. With the other cards on this list, we have Immotec the Stormlord, which is a two generic and two black for a legendary artifact creature Necron. That's a 3-3 that says whenever one or more artifacts leave your graveyard, create two black 2-2 two -two Necron warrior artifact creature tokens. And there's another effect on it, but I generally don't think it's as important as being able to create two 2-2 two -two artifact Necron warrior artifact creature tokens. This one has a similar effect to the Poxwalkers in that if you have a Phyrexian altar set up with Gravecrawler, you can then also just make uh, infinite 2-2 two -two black artifact creature tokens just so long as you have a zombie to keep recasting the Gravecrawler. And then finally, we have Biotransference that says creatures that you control are artifacts in addition to their other types. And the same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards that you own that aren't on the battlefield. And it also has the ability when you cast an artifact spell, you lose one life and create a 2-2 two -two black Necron warrior artifact creature token. While its combo lines aren't as obvious as the first two are, there still is probably something there for a deck that wants to either allow it to tutor things using artifact tutors that it normally shouldn't, or if there's something there with a second effect that allows you to just create advantage using casting artifacts to make additional tokens to start sacking to different things to make more mana. Overall, all three of these cards just seem really powerful, and while I haven't figured out all the lines, I'm fairly certain at least one of these is going to have some pretty sizable impact on the format. Well, thank you all for watching. I hope you leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you all have an excellent day.